Houdini 20 brings a bunch of new features to Karma. So let's take a look at what some of the new stuff is that's available to us. So just uh, start off here, this scene, everything that's in this, including the lighting, the materials, and the models, this is all from the Grayscale Gorilla Plus library. So uh, I did a video on that a couple days ago. I'm not sponsored by them, but they did give me access to their library. So just keep that in mind as you're watching through that and uh, looking at everything in here. But I'm going to use their stuff for demonstration purposes here. So check out that other video if you're interested, and I'll also leave a link in the description to their website so you can take a look at it if you're interested in grabbing their stuff. But anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at the render gallery. That's the first thing that I want to take a look at. So we'll come to this little plus icon, go to new pane type, and then we're coming down to Solaris and then render gallery. And the reason we want to take a look at that is because of the new render stats. So let's press Alt, Shift, and C. And we can pop out a new window here just to give us a little bit more space. And we can render out um, our scene, so we can just render out in the background. So I'll just go ahead and click that, and it's going to start to render out our scene in the background. You can see that it pops up here, and if we just go ahead and click on it, you can see that it's starting to render out our scene, which is pretty sweet. And that just allows us to just render that while we're working, and we can change some things. So let's go ahead, let's take a snapshot of this. So we'll snapshot that, and then we can come and maybe we change some things. So let's come over to this uh, material linker, and let's go ahead and just lower that out for now. So I'll come to the material linker. Maybe we want to change the material maybe on our pyramids here. So I have this corroded copper material on them right now. Let's go ahead and just disable that. Let's maybe come to, um, I don't know, maybe the dirty brass, we'll use this one. And let's drag our pyramids over. Actually, we'll double click on this and then drag our pyramids over and accept there. And now we have our, our pyramid set to that brass material and we can bring back our render gallery here. And we can again, click this little render in the background icon and we start to have that render in the background. So let's go ahead, let's take a look at this one first. Actually, we can take a look at the render stats. So that is in this little icon right here. So if I click that icon, you can see you get a bunch of information that pops up. So you can see what you're using. So we have XPU, we have our pass samples, we have how much time it takes, so it took 48 seconds to render that out. We have the AOVs, our XPU devices, our memory, all that stuff that we have available to us. Let's go ahead and just maximize that here. And you can see your different information down here. We have our how much our XPU devices are being utilized. So I just want to point this out real quick too, because if we take a look actually at uh, right here in our viewport, we have this rendering showing up and we have this optics, optics, and then the Embry, it kind of went away there, it says idle now. But that is not how much, um, like, it's not, I, I don't know what my brain's trying to say right now, but the way, like, the, these numbers right here, the 49%, the 37%, and the 15%, that's how much contribution is being made by each device. So my 3090 is uh, rendering 49% of the image, my A4000 is rendering 37%, and my CPU is is rendering 15%. So that's how much of the contribution of each individual um, piece of hardware that you have is um, contributing to the render. So we have all sorts of different things in here. This is really good for debugging. You have resolution and all that stuff too. Uh, you have different things that can show you how much time is being taken and everything like that. So you can really dial in everything for your scene, maybe find the bottlenecks and get rid of them. And we can click on this one and then you can see that the information updates. So this one took a little bit longer. It looks like for some reason this material is a little bit harder to calculate. Uh, and then, or maybe it was because I was had the, the scene running in the viewport as well. But either way, this one took four, or a minute and, and 15 seconds to render out. And again, we have similar stuff showing up in our different settings here. 
And we can, so we have our scene set up to this right here. We should be able to take a, a snapshot. So if we, we took this snapshot, we take a look at this. We can revert network to the snapshot. This isn't new to Houdini 20, but it is something that is super cool that you can do. So let's take a look at, at that. You can also render multiple cameras at a time, which I forgot to take a look at before this video. So uh, just know that you can render out multiple shots at once and uh, that's available in Houdini 20 uh, as part of the new stuff. Um, one other thing that I do want to point out here. So if we, I do have the Karma render settings hooked up. So if I go ahead and just get rid of that inside of our scene here, we can press D in the viewport and we have something new in this little display option. So we have this render section where our Houdini GL is, but more importantly, we have Karma CPU and Karma XPU settings. So this is basically just what these Karma render settings are. But if you don't have one of these in your scene or in your tree, you can actually start to render just directly with the settings that it has available to you from the display option. So I go ahead and load up our XPU. You can see that it is just starting to render based off of those settings, which is super nice. You don't actually have to drop that down now. You can just start to render, just speed things up a little bit uh, more uh, in, in your workflows. So let's hop out of there for now. We do have some new things to materials, so let's go ahead and I'm just going to maybe dive into one of these materials or maybe I'll make a new one. So Karma Material Builder. We'll jump in there. So we have some new things in here. We have a new ramp parameter. So Karma Ramp Parameter. This is new to Houdini 20, so that should make it available. Um, let's make it available all the way up on the uh, it's probably in the material if you add it to material properties. So um, it makes the this ramp parameter available to you, um, not just inside here, but you can edit it from from actually some of the stuff in Solaris. There's also a rounded edge vop, which is kind of cool. Um, not sure. Let's see. This is from the normal, so we need to plug this into normal. So I haven't actually used this. So let's go ahead and pipe this in here. So we'll do the normal in there. Looks like we have some different settings in here to adjust some things. Let's go ahead and make a box and we'll bring this into our scene here. So maybe we raise this up a little bit, bring down the uniform scale, maybe something like that. And we can apply that material to it. So in our material linker, just bring this over here and we can drag our cube in there and accept. Now, if we load up Karma XPU, let's go ahead and bring our render settings back. And we load this up. We should have some rounded edges on our, on our box. Let's see what we get. So maybe let's zoom in a little bit here. All right. So, yeah, we start to have some some rounded edges there. So if we bring this back up, you can change the radius. Maybe we set this to like 0.1. It should be very, yeah, so it's it's very pronounced there. So you have this new rounded edges just to give you some nice little rounded, fake rounded edges on your geometry if you want to, to use that. We also have some other new things inside of materials here. So we have a new Voronoi 2D and 3D noise. So we got two new VOPs here, so the Ronoi 2D and 3D. So you can play around with those. Some new noises are always welcome. We also have a second set of noises that are new. So these are Material X noises, so Circles 2D. So these should be new as well, so you can play around with that inside um, Houdini 20. Let's go ahead and just wire this into maybe the base color. Let's see, that's just a float, but it shouldn't matter. Let's just load up our view there. Yep, so we have a new noise here that we can play with. So you can change the circle scale. This would be good for creating um, some, some new procedural materials using Material X and stuff. Always welcome to see some new noises inside of Karma. I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing some more with uh, Material X and stuff as that starts to develop further. But we also have a new hex tiling. So Karma hex tile texture, we have 
two different ones in here. So we have triplanar and we have a UV one. So we can just pop that down and we can wire that into our base color or whatever. And if we selected a material, so let's go ahead and we'll move to one. Let's see. Uh, actually, they are on a different hard drive, so let me find them real quick. CG, oh. wrong, wrong hard drive again. Sorry about that. Give this a second to load up. I did cover this in my first impressions video, so take a look at that if you're interested. But let's go ahead and just load in any one of these. Maybe, maybe a fabric would be good too. This will do a blue fabric here, and we'll select just the diffuse there. And it's going to take a second to load into Material X, but this is a new way to get rid of some of the tiling that you have in regular sort of texturing processes. So uh, if I take a real close look here, you can, you can really see it in here. So uh, let's zoom in super far. You can see we have these little, they're, it's kind of hard to tell what shape they are, but we have these textures that are being randomly rotated. Um, let's see, random rotation. If we set this to zero, we should get some of that back. Looks a little bit less crazy, but we get some of that tiling kind of showing a little bit more. Um, so you can mess around with, with that and get rid of some tiling in your scenes. So definitely nice to have a new way to, to get rid of some tiling. You don't have to manually set up a bunch of masks and everything. You can maybe get away with using this hex tiled um, texture. And then the other thing that they have that's new that I want to cover real quick is a new PBR texture set bop. So this is a way to just set up your whole material. I'm going to go ahead and just delete some of these. So instead of having to load in a ton of different uh, image textures, we have just one node that kind of controls all of these. So we can bring in all of our different material information in here. So if I wanted to bring in our fabric, we'll do our diffuse. Um, I didn't see specular roughness. We can do roughness. We can do our, looks like it doesn't have height in here. Uh, it didn't have color or uh, opacity, I mean. Um, I don't think metal, it's not a metal, so don't need that one. Didn't have any subsurface. We'll just leave it like this. So let's we'll just wire in our base color and then we have our specular roughness, so we can wire that into our specular input and specular roughness. And if I restart this render, we should get that to, to show up. And even if you don't, um, if you wire in just the, the defaults, um, like all of these, the defaults, we have these default values allow us to um, affect things. So even if I didn't have something loaded into here so let's just delete out these it's sorry it's going to load in the default values of these so we have one node that kind of controls everything on the standard surface or most of the things that you'd have in the standard surface anyways so if i change this base color you're going to see there we get an update there um, we can change the specular roughness and all that stuff as well so that's a super nice node just to clean things up now you may not want it in every context but you can use that uh, to set up your textures and just keep things a little bit more clean. It doesn't have everything from the standard surface. Like it has the emission color, but it doesn't have like the emission amounts. If I come in here, come to emission, it doesn't have this emission like toggle. So I'm not sure why they did that, but uh, just know that you'll have to do some things on the standard surface still, but most of it will be on this PBR texture set, which is super nice just to keep things a little bit cleaner. But anyways, that wraps up uh, my little overview of some of the things that you may not have noticed that they have added to Karma. There is a bunch more of stuff, obviously, uh, some of the bigger things that they covered, like the thin wall materials. They have um, thin wall stuff in the transmission, um, some dispersion and transmission stuff that they didn't have before. Um, so check uh, the documentation for all that stuff if you're interested, but uh, I may take a look at that in the future as well. But Anyways, that is kind of some of the newer stuff to Karma that wasn't focused on super heavily in any of the videos um, that they showed off in 
like the the demos so um, just take a look at all the new stuff take a look at the documentation and see the new things that you might have missed because there's a lot there's actually a lot that was added to karma a uh, ton of different things in there but anyways thank you for watching i have a bunch of other stuff on houdini on my channel so if you want to learn more about houdini make sure to check out those videos i also run a patreon which is free to follow by the way if you want to follow that you can do that the link is in the description i'm going to be dropping some free stuff on there so make sure you follow that um, and don't miss any of that stuff i've already put up some of the stuff some stuff for free so grab that if you're interested obviously i have some paid stuff on there as well i'm gonna grab a bunch of my project files basically from the last like year and a half or so then make sure to jump on over there and grab those if you're interested i've got a ton of different things on there but anyways thank you guys for watching like i said check out the other videos on my channel if you want to learn more about houdini and have a good day